I think I'm live. This is a different setup. I'm on the desktop. Let's see what this looks like. Hold on. It's not what I'm used to. I hope you guys can hear me. And I hope I'm live publicly. Drop me a comment if I am, because I, uh, I'm not used to doing this from the, the desktop. And um, I got to do a call here in about 20 for Shirley and Lane McNeil. I'm excited to do that with them. Uh, but I wanted to come on here and just share some some updates and share some good news, some exciting news. So uh, I guess I should get to the first bit of exciting news. Maybe I should hold that for later. I get too excited to do, share it anyway. So I'm going to share first and foremost um, that we do have a, a new heart of ER Shred. Uh, and so I want to announce that because... On Mondays, that, that's my most favorite thing to do, the thing I get the, the most excited about. In fact, what I do is when Heather cues it up and tells me who the board has um, awarded, I go and I go into the ER Shred group and I go and I, I look up their name and you should do the same. It's a lot of fun and it's cool because a whole history, an entire history of all their posts will come up. And you can get a feel for that person. You can get a feel for um, why that person is so wonderful and why they're the heart of ER Shred. Um, so with that said, I'll start by saying that uh, we do have a brand new Mimi Terrell Heart of ER Shred Award recipient. And on behalf of the board, I would like to welcome, and I, I Pretty sure I say your name correctly, the last name, <laughs> but uh, that is Casey Witsit. Casey, uh, you've been involved with us for a very, a very long time, and you've been supporting others and and you know uh, cheering on others as you know that that's what's synonymous with being a heart of ER shred is. It's not that you would come into the group and just post all pictures of you. Uh, we want that too. We want people to brag on themselves. We want people to be proud of themselves. But beyond that, the culture is one of looking, you know, then looking beyond yourself. How do I serve this community? How do I give back? How do I serve those that are, uh, you know, getting involved? And that's what the, the heart of ER Shred really is all about. It's not self-serving, if you, if you will. Um, but please don't ever feel um, apprehensive or shy about posting your story because um, there's there's a lot of us out there we want to be inspired by you we want to know your story we want to know the raw story so this is going to be one of those sacred spaces where you can come and you can open up and you can be vulnerable and you can tell it like it is and rest assured that you're not going to have criticism and judgment and anything of that sort coming coming our way. Casey, congratulations. Okay, so you guys can hear me. That's awesome. Congratulations and thank you for all that you do. We really appreciate you and thank you for representing what the Heart of ER Shred really is all about. Okay, so I've got some updates. We've got this Sunday coming up, we've got our Lucky You. Um, it's our group shred. So for those of you who are gearing up for that, please join us in that group shred, which is starts, kicks off this Sunday. I can't remember exactly why we had to start it a day early, but we did. Um, and there was good reason. Heather has planned these out. You know, we've had board meetings. We've planned them out meticulously. Well, that's so fun to see Casey. I can't wait till she uh, hears the big news. All right, next up. Last I heard, we get our pack March 9th. So it got bumped from the 3rd to the 9th, and I still can't say that that's concrete, but we do appreciate our partner company, Isogenics, um, and we understand that you know these things take time to implement, and, and so we're grateful, and we'll continue to be patient and wait for that. Okay, tomorrow night, you will have a, a Shred Your Body call. Uh, Heather Sika Leonard, Chief Shred Educator, will be... Uh, subbing in again for Jesse. I don't know who her guest is, but make sure you're on that. That'll be in the group at ershredders.com. And Wednesday night, come a live call. Join me there. Uh, that is 5 p.m. Pacific, 8 p.m. Eastern time. Please come and cheer on these heroes. 
uh, who have taken back control of their life and, you know, they're gaining that freedom. They're, it's a beautiful call. It's just beautiful all the way around. It's all the warm feel goods, all the good vibes. Um, so please come and cheer on others. And, and, uh, we've kind of began to treat like a rite of passage. So if you haven't been on it, please, you know, step up to bat because let us celebrate you. Let us do that for you. I've had people in the group say things to me like, you know, I've never had anybody tell me they're proud of me before until now. Um, I've had people say that they've never had a compliment in their life that they could remember until they got involved in our culture and our community. It's really special. So I, I hope that you understand it's kind of a rite of passage in that it's a way for you to be brave, trusting that this is a safe space and that, and that, uh, we'll cheer for you and we will cheer for you. Um, that's really what the space is all about is cheering each other on and keeping it all positive and uh, uplifting and, and encouraging, especially in the, the climate we're dealing with, you know, all throughout the world. It's important that we go to safe spaces where we can be uplifted by others, like-minded individuals. And then Shredders Unite just wanted to give a big, huge thank you uh, to Stacy Linstead and Bob Sivright for doing that last week. And it was so fun to, to hear Stacy's story. And we appreciate you and what you're all about and all the cool things you said about ER Shred moving forward. It, it really hit home for Crystal and I, and, and I saw that it did for Bob as well. Um, so thank you for all of that and all that vision casting. And it was beautiful. Thank you. All right. I was going to share a message tonight. And the message that I, I want to share is about um, perspective. And so I wanted to do that because I think a lot of us don't have maybe proper perspective around a lot of different things. But in my case, you know, I've been humbled. I've been very humbled because with the R Shred, I got in the best shape of my life. And then, you know, I had a lot of things happened to me that I'd shared in a recent post. I, I did get a virus that set me back five weeks. I did tear my back muscles, my lower back muscles that set me back another seven weeks. And beyond that, there's been a couple other things that have kind of set me back. And it's really frustrating, um, beyond frustrating, because for me personally, I don't know about you guys, but when I'm not active and when I can't really get out and move and and uh, enjoy myself in that way, it, it has a negative effect on my emotional health, it has a negative effect on my mental health. Um, which, what I found with ER Shred is because I have the ability to really rein in, lock, lock down the diet part of my life, which is such a critically important part, you know, I haven't gone, you know, I haven't tanked, if you will. Um, there's just these, these speed bumps for me right now. And I wanted to share some perspective of an individual who was kind of a real life hero to me. And that man's name was Tom Barlow. I remember when I was about, uh, I want to say I was 17 years old. I was playing football. I was big. I was strong. I was um, athletic. And I was asked to help a quadriplegic man um, be lifted in, in my neighborhood, be lifted in and out of his bed on a daily basis, uh, two times. So otherwise, Tom, if, uh, if I didn't help him, he would get bed sores. And I remember I would go over there first thing in the morning and I would lift him out of his bed. There was this special technique way of lifting where I'd put one arm under his his knees and I put one arm around his back and kind of bear hug him upwards and then turn him and put him into this chair. And then I would strap him into the chair. His mother was, you know, she was aged and she couldn't lift him. And so I did that morning and then I'd come back and I think it was around two 30 in the afternoon. I would come back and I would lift him back out of the chair and put him back into the bed. Um, because he could only stay in the chair for so long. Uh, but I want to tell you of the profound impact that this had on my life because at the time I was in a very selfish state. 
I was in a state where all that mattered to me was my physical body. Um, all that mattered to me was athletics. And my identity and my self-worth was all wrapped up in, in that physical body. And I remember when I met Tom, I was it was a humbling experience for me because here I was, this kind of buffed out, you know, athlete, and and here was Tom. And Tom was he was skin and bones. Um, he, he had no muscle tone whatsoever, naturally. Uh, he had been in a horrible accident with a group of his friends and he'd been thrown from a Jeep and, um, become a, a quadriplegic. Um, when I met him, I was, I remember feeling like I, I felt like, um, It made me feel almost selfish uh, to be able to do the things that I was able to do. I remember I'd ride up on my mountain bike and Tom would be sitting in the front room looking out his window waiting for me to come and he'd see me ride up on the mountain bike. I'd park it on the grass. I'd go, you know, I, I could just go right in. So I'd walk right in the door. I'd come in to, to Tom's room. I remember he would be his smile, he'd be grinning from ear to ear. He was so excited whenever he got to see me, and he was so thrilled that I was on that bike. And he would tell me stories about how active he used to be, and he was unbelievably active, um, very outdoorsy. And he just talked to me about how much joy that brought him to see me on that bike. Um, you know, I've got a long ways to go because when I can't be physically active, I, I have a very hard time staying, staying up, um, very hard time for me. And yet this man was in his bed, you know, for, I don't know how many total years, but probably 20, uh, before he did pass. I might even have a picture of him right here. I probably do. Uh... Bottom line is, you know, that perspective has been a gift to me my entire life um, to always keep Tom in mind. Whenever I'm active, I think about Tom and I think about another dear friend of mine who goes by the name of Steve Thomas, and he's in Richmond, Virginia. Now he's in Virginia Beach, but another individual who I got to know when I was, you know, those formidable years, those formative years when, uh, formative years when, you, uh, you, you know, it's pretty impressionable years. And I remember meeting this other individual, Steve Thomas, who was a mega successful man. He also um, suffered in a lot of ways. He, he had debilitating arthritis and his vision was gone. He could only see about, a, about the size of a pinhole. But again, in this case, this man, Steve Thomas, was the happiest man I ever met in my life. I mean, this guy, I mean, he just had this incredibly positive perspective. And I remember whenever I would get up and give a talk and, and uh, he would be there, I remember him, <laughs> it's like having a second father. I remember him just smiling again, ear to ear, as, as big as you, biggest, most funnest, beautiful <laughs> smile you've ever seen in your life. And he just smiled at me the entire time I talked. And I couldn't, it, it brings me joy as I think about these experiences because it is helping me shift my perspective. And uh, Steve, you know, he was always just so damn happy and upbeat and positive and fun, even though he had a lot of, you know, personal health challenges. And, you know, same thing, if I called him today, Steve, it's the same thing. Um, and you know, why are these, these influences in my life? It's important because for someone who, you know, their entire life has put such stock and such value in physical health, um, it's important for me to remember that 
it's not everything. And that we just, we need to learn to be grateful always, no matter what the circumstances and no matter what we're dealing with. And we need to constantly try to be thinking about how we're influencing other people vibrationally. Yeah. So that is really, really important. And I hope that I can be a positive vibrational influence in your lives. Um, I know my wife is, <laughs> and I know so many others are. Um, with that said, what is Lenny's role moving forward? It's important that we kind of define that because, you know, we, ER Shred, we are embarking kind of on a new, uh, the next chapter, if you will, because, see, with that pack, we are able to show any of the, we'll call them uh, happy customers of the protocol, of the community, of the, the ER Shred overall, we're able to show them how they can take that exact same protocol slash community and, you know, and share that forward which they've already been doing anyway, be, out of the goodness of their hearts, because the need is there and, and it's goodness, it's it's working, it's, it's useful, it's helpful, it's magic. And we're able to share that forward now and also get, you know, show you the, the path, if you will, of how you can be compensated for doing that. And you know what? It's... Is it useful? That's the question that I always ask myself. Is it is that useful? It is useful. It's useful in ways that uh, are probably different than you could imagine. It's it's not useful in that we can now entice people with money and entice people with financial opportunity and and hype people up. And that is not the ER shred way. That is not our culture. Um, but would we love to help? You know families pay for their vacations with you know supplemental passive income yes we really would we love to help parents pay for their kids college tuitions with supplemental passive income from this kind of a model absolutely we would would we love to have older people who are retiring but can't really retire actually be able to do something on the side from home um you know according to their dictates and generate significant passive income so that they can have a better retirement so that they could go travel. Yes. Yes. And so I could name off a hundred more things that we want for our tribe. And the bottom line is we need to be shown how to hunt. If you will, ER shred is very primal. <laughs> uh, it combines, uh, Jesse Jamnick's words. I'll always give him credit for this because I love it. It combines the primitive and the native, the ancestral with modern modern science, modern advances, modern technologies and, and products. And that's what we've done is bridged the two. Well, with that in mind, Lenny comes in because Lenny, a lot of you, what a lot of you don't know is he wrote the training for a whole restaurant chain, three, 400 restaurants. He wrote all the training for that. Lenny helped write the training for Isogenics University, the original. Um, Lenny also wrote the training, uh, helped write the training for the Forever Pack. And a lot of you are, are familiar with that, and that's that was wildly, wildly successful. But I want to make a very important point here that that Lenny is dead, just like the Sean that many of you knew from years past is dead. And there is a new Lenny, and he understands what this culture is all about. And he is more so than most anyone else. He's clued into why that's so important that we maintain this culture and treat it as sacred and that we really don't compromise our core values or our, our code of ethics. So I hope you guys are excited for what Lenny's going to bring because he's going to teach you how to hunt. And in modern and ancient times, the way that our ancestors had to hunt was they had to, you know, make spears and learn how to hunt. <laughs> in in uh, that was in ancient times. In modern times, we have to learn how to generate income for our families. That's how we hunt. 
And so Lenny is going to dive deep into how you're going to use ER Shred, the protocol, the community, the whole shebang to not only generate that income, teach you how to hunt, but in the process, it's going to become unbelievably fulfilling for you in so many ways. Like you guys just have no idea. So that's what he's been charged with. I know it sounds like a tall task, but I believe that, that Lenny is really up to the task. And I hope for any of you that knew the, the old Lenny and had any judgment on him like I did, I hope you'll consider giving him another chance. I really do, because I'm so grateful that I did. That's all I got for you. I got to go hop on my other call. Thanks for being on. Love you guys. And we'll see you on the calls this week, okay? Later. Later. Shred on, shred heads.